How well do you remember episodes in which you were completely shocked? I will never forget the moment that I learned my mother had died. I have a crystal clear image of that moment. It turns out that whenever we experience very shocking moments, people experience or feel that their memories of that moment are very vivid. They're very clear and very detailed. So for example, older folks might remember where they were when President Kennedy was assassinated. Uh, people my age are more likely to remember where they were when they learned that uh, a space shuttle called Challenger exploded. Um, and that was particularly moving because there was a school teacher on that particular space shuttle and elementary school children from across the country were huddled in front of television sets so they could watch this teacher go into space and wouldn't you know um, that's the shuttle that explodes. Um, some people were shocked by the election of President Trump and Vice President Pence um, and so they have a clear image of the moment that happened. Um, many people in California and LA were shocked um, when there was a massive shooting in Las Vegas during a country western concert. And they can remember quite clearly where they were when they learned of that shooting. So that's what I mean by shocking memories. Memories of where you were when you learned about a shocking incident. What do they feel like? Can you remember any? Maybe one of these or something else. In near us, there was a shooting um, at a dance um, bar and grill called the Borderline a few years ago. Maybe that moment is a flashbulb memory for you. That's what psychologists call these shocking memories. They call them flashbulb memories. Now, you've probably never seen a flashbulb, but in the old days, before flash was something that was part of a camera, it was a separate um, instrument that you held that had a special light bulb that only worked once, but it made this very bright flash. Um, and so people use the term flashbulb memory um, because it gave the impression that the memory was very clear. It was like a flash of light onto some event. Um, and for a long time, um, and in fact, originally when flashbulb memories um, were proposed as a concept, uh, researchers thought that flashbulb memories were more accurate and lasted longer than other types of memories. But as you'll see in a minute, we've learned more recently that flashbulb memories are not more accurate than other types of memories. And I'm going to uh, give you an example from President George W. Bush who was President of the United States on 9-11, September 11th, when uh, in New York City, two planes flew into two towers of the World Trade Center. On the day of that disaster, President Bush was in an elementary school classroom. He was about to read children a story. His wife, the First Lady, uh, worked very hard to promote literacy amongst children. So this was consistent with the sort of thing that he would do. Um, the picture that you see here is the moment when the president was informed that the second plane, that a second plane had hit the tower. When the first plane hit the first tower, people thought it was a terrible accident. But when the second plane hit the other tower, then we all knew, as did the president, that the country was under attack. So that moment was a very important moment. And you see it happening here, and you can almost see his face just sort of freeze. Okay. After 9-11, days after 9-11, a reporter asked uh, President Bush where he was when he learned the second plane had hit one of the World Trade Center towers. And his response was, I was sitting outside the classroom waiting to go in. I saw an airplane hit the tower. The TV was obviously on. So his memory is that he learned about this incident from the television. He actually learned about it from his aide here. Now, 
the moment that he learned about this incident, I'm sure is a flashbulb memory. So you would expect it to be more accurate, but it turns out our flashbulb memories are not more accurate. In fact, as you'll see in a minute, there's reason to believe that flashbulb memories are actually less accurate, less reliable than our everyday memories. They just feel more reliable. So the interesting thing about flashbulb memories is that there's this disconnect between how accurate we feel they are and how accurate they actually are. And it wasn't until researchers developed techniques to test the accuracy of memories that they found out, made this discovery, that flashbulb memories are not more accurate than everyday memories. I'm going to start with one study that was conducted in 1998 in England. And it was a study of people's memory when they found that this woman, who was a princess in the royal family in England, um, her name was Princess Diana, uh, when they discovered that she had been killed in a car accident in Paris. That was very shocking. She was young and beautiful, and um, it, was, it was a shock to see this young person uh, die. So here's the technique that scientists use. They use a repeated recall method. So how did they do that? They measured memory immediately after the event. They found people and asked them about their memories of the moment they found out that Princess Diana had been killed in a car accident. And they also asked those people to recall everything they could about that day. What did they have for lunch? When did they get up? Just that day's memories. So they did that immediately after Princess Diana was killed and they did it again 10 weeks after she was killed. Now, when you're asked about something immediately after it happens, that's when your memory is best. So not surprisingly, um, memories are high right after uh, the event. But if you go out 10 days, 10 weeks later, how much could people remember about Princess Diana's death 10 weeks after the accident? Well, it turns out they remembered less about the moment they learned of her car crash than they could remember about everyday activities that they had told researchers about 10 weeks previously. So you're seeing evidence for more accurate memories of everyday events than shocking events. But if you look over at this other graph that where people reported how confident they were in the accuracy of their memories, it's flipped. People are more confident in their memories of Princess Diana's death than they are of their everyday memories, even though it's the everyday memories that are more accurate. And you're going to see this over and over again. So it's not specific to British people. Um, on 9-11, actually the day after 9-11, uh, universities that were near the World Trade Center in New York City ran a series of very important studies in which they asked people how they learned about 9-11, the, the attack on 9-11. Um, they also asked people to recall other events from that same week. And then they went back to those same students and they asked them again to describe their memories from their memory of learning about the attacks on the World Trade Center on 9-11 and their everyday memories. They did that again a week after 9-11. They did it six weeks after 9-11 and they did it again half a year, so six months after 9-11. And if we look at the left graph, what you can see is um, the memories, the accuracy of people's memories um, drop consistently the farther you get away from the event. And that makes sense, right? The farther you get away from some shocking event, the less you can remember about it. But notice people are remembering a little more accurately from the everyday events than they are from their flashbulb memories of discovering the tragedy of 9-11. But now compare that to the graph on the right. And what you see is people believe their 9-11 memories, their shocking memories, are more accurate than their everyday memories but the data actually show the opposite pattern. So we're really deluded when it comes to everyday memories. Okay, so that was New York City. Maybe it's something funny about New Yorkers. How about LA? Well, here's a study where people were interviewed 
three days after the O.J. Simpson trial concluded and the verdict was read. Um, and they were asked about their memories, um, flashbulb memories often, of the moment they learned that O.J. Simpson was found not guilty of murdering his wife and his wife's friend. Um, and they took each of the people that they interviewed and they separated them into two groups. One group was interviewed a second time uh, 15 months after the first interview, so over a year. And the second group was interviewed 32 months after the first interview. So these are a really long time. It's a very interesting pattern that emerges here. If you look at the number of times people say they don't remember, you would expect don't remembers to increase as you get farther away in time. But no, it turns out that I don't remember responses dropped and what increased was incorrect memories. So it's not that we just forget with time, it's that our memories become less accurate at least for flashbulb memories. Now, what's going on here? Why are these flashbulb or shocking memories or emotional memories um, so strange? Why are we so confident in them and yet it turns out we're no more accurate in, uh, with those kinds of memories? Well, in one study of that, they showed subjects a lot of pictures of trees and pictures of people making uh, emotional expressions, negative emotional expressions like anger and sadness. Um, and each of the pictures had a box around it of a particular color. So they studied those pictures with the box around it. And then they came back later and they were given another set of pictures to judge. And actually that other set of pictures, half of it contained pictures that they had seen before and pictures that they had never seen before. And the task of the subjects was to say, saying, I remember seeing that, or I know I saw that, but I can't remember it, or that's a new picture I didn't see. It turns out that subjects were more confident in their memories for the negative emotional expressions. Right? So there's something about negative emotions and uh, our confidence that goes together. And a lot of times shocking events are negative. But what's interesting in this study is even though people um, were less confident in their, I'm sorry, but one more aspect of this is even though subjects were more confident in their memories for the negative pictures, they were less likely or less accurate in their judgments of the color of the boxes around the pictures. So it's another example of where confidence seems to be disentangled from accuracy. So why is it that our flashbulb memories are less accurate than our memories for everyday events? Well, there's a hypothesis that's very important called the narrative rehearsal hypothesis. Narrative rehearsal hypothesis. And what that hypothesis says is that when something very shocking happens, especially if it happens um, in your state or in your town or in your family uh, or in the world, what happens? Well, social media covers it, TV, newspaper, journalists of all types cover it, and we talk about it, right? So for example, in 2018, when the Borderline Bar and Grill in Thousand Oaks um, had a mass shooting, um, I can tell you that uh, the, the next time I had class at CSUN, that's what people wanted to talk about. So everybody shared, did they know someone? Had they been there before? You know, information that they had heard about the shooter. So it turns out that when we experience a big shocking negative event, we talk about it. And it's possible that the talking about the events is what makes our memories less accurate. Now, why would that happen? Well, that would happen if our memories are actually constructed. Yeah, constructed. You'll find out about that in the next lecture.